Hello everybody, my name is Mitchell here at Imprint Manufacturing. In this video will explain how you will calibrate your steps for the X, Y, and Z axis on your 3D printer. Adjusting your steps will allow you to produce parts that are the right size and minimize your tolerances on your parts. This video is for adjusting your X, Y, and Z steps after you have initially set up your printer and you notice your prints are not the right size. Check out our earlier video called The Complete Guide to Stepper Motors, where I explain how you will first calculate your steps for the X, Y, and Z motors based on your printer setup. After you have plugged in your initial values, you may need to go back and do some adjustments, and that's the purpose of this video. So let's get started. First thing you will need is a calibration cube. You can either make a cube part to print, but I like to download the cube on Thingiverse called the XYZ 20mm Calibration Cube. The cube has each face labeled for the axis, which makes it easy to remember which length we want to measure and what axis on your printer it refers to. You download the file straight from the website and you will need to extract the SLT from the zip file. The next step, you will need to prepare the cube in the slicer of your choice. Remember to align the cube where each of the labeled faces is parallel to its assigned axis. Slice your model and load the G-code into your printer. I printed my calibration cube on Imprint X in about 30 minutes. You'll want to use some digital calipers to measure the length of each of the faces of your printed cube. So my extraction the cube shows a length of 20.8 millimeters. On the Y side of the cube, the length is 20.89 millimeters. For the Z, I measured the side of the cube to be 20.19 millimeters. So this means for my 20 by 20 cube, I am slightly larger than what I actually wanted. The goal was 20 millimeters on each side. To make adjustments, we will only need to know one equation. So here's the equation for the new step value. It is equal to the actual value divided by the observed value multiplied by a current step per millimeter value, which is the value we have in Marlin. Breaking down these terms we're using, the actual value is our value we were designing to or expected the part to be. So in our case, this is going to be the 20 millimeters. The observed value will be the length of each side of the cube that we measured. So let's take our values and do an example with this equation. I summarized what I got for the X, Y, and Z axis in the table shown now. I looked in Marlin and found the current step values I had for the X, Y, and Z axis. The actual value we wanted was 20 millimeters. We will have to use this equation three times since all three of the lengths we measured were greater than the dimension we had wanted. So starting with the X axis, I divided 20 millimeters by 20.8 millimeters and multiplied the result by 78.68. So my new X step would be 75.65 steps per millimeter. For the Y axis, I divided 20 millimeters by 20.89 and multiplied the result by 99.60. My new Y step would then be 95.36 steps per millimeter. For the Z axis, I divided 20 millimeters by 20.19 millimeters, and then I multiplied the result by 400.63. This would make my new Z step value be 400.82 steps per millimeter. After you do the calculations, you will need to update your printer's firmware with these new values. I use Marlin 2.0 and I use a microcart SSD to flash my boards. In Marlin, we are in the configurations.h section and we want to scroll down till we find the define default axis steps per
per unit. The values in the bracket correspond to your printer steps per millimeter for that specific axis. Yours might look a little different depending on how many extruders your printer has, but the first three values are always going to be the x-axis shown first, the y-axis, and then the z-axis. The E0 value is the steps per millimeter of your first extruder, and if you have more than one extruder, you will be using the E1 and E2 slots here. I will update the x-axis first by putting our new value of 75.65 steps per millimeter here. I will then update the y-axis by putting our new value of 95.36 steps per millimeter. Then I will update the z-axis. We will put the new value of 400.82 steps per millimeter here in the third slot. Now that I've updated the default axis steps with the values we calculated, we will need to compile the code by clicking on the check mark in the bottom corner. This will check for any errors we might have, and when successful, we will see a green success. To find the location of the firmware we just edited, we will need to go to the build section under PIO. Right click on the build and hit reveal in file explorer. This will take you to the location of the firmware we just changed. Open the build folder and then open the board folder. The file we will copy to our SD card is called the firmware.bin. Notice the timestamp when we have made changes. To load the firmware, just insert the micro SSD card into the slot on your board and turn on your printer. The board will begin flashing and the new firmware will be updated. You will see flashing green lights on the board to indicate the firmware is being updated and will turn off when done. The lights on the board turn off, which tells us that the firmware is done. It's best practice to repeat these steps to ensure we have indeed changed our steps and our cube is now printing at 20 millimeters. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Happy printing, everybody!